Hey everybody, Mark Agnes here in the back room of Norman's Rare Guitars. Welcome back to the final episode of Guitar of the Day for the Week. Country and Western has gone bye-bye. If we're keeping track, and I am freaking keeping track, you better bet that's last Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Woo! That's four out of five. I don't know if you're counting or if you can count that high. I don't count good. <laughs> Oh man, feels good, I gotta tell you. Let me on a streak. Um, real quick, happy 31st birthday, my buddy Chris Mondu. Cheers, buddy. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching the show. Um, the burst is gone. Oh yeah, Cavs got swept. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They got our number, man. Yeah. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. <laughs> I don't know. Bron Bron's still a great of all time. Doesn't change any of that for me. Probably come to LA too. Woo! We'll be hanging out again, just like the old days <laughs> when, we were, when we were friends. We didn't know each other. I made that up. Um, so it's freaking Stratter Day, but it's not. We're talking about the contest, real quick. Not oh, the contest. Okay, contest will begin, I guess, as soon as uh, this video goes up to air. You got to name uh, all five guitars from the week, all the set lists. Uh, corresponding to those guitars with the artists. Email that to Jen at normansrareguitars.com along with your t-shirt size and address. We will pick a winner on Tuesday during uh, Tuesday's episode. We will let the... Uh... You got a full thing of water there, Pete? Sure. Right, cool. <laughs> Sorry, homie. It's not that big a deal. Oh, uh, it bounces back. And if your no. email bounces back for any reason, send it to... Uh... Send it to uh, Norms. Norms Rare Guitars. Norms Rare Guitars at gmail.com. I work here. I know what that is. <laughs> Jen will sort it all out. We'll get the kinks out of this and then we'll start giving all sorts of fun stuff away to you guys. As I was saying before, Stratterday has been canceled. Aww. We have a lot to talk about, but I have a feeling you guys are going to like this. It's going to be controversial, to say the very least. Oh. Are you intrigued? <laughs> it better be. Come on back, check it out. I don't know when it's from. All I can tell you is it's what it is. It's a 1959 Sunburst Les Paul conversion. Original double black PAF pickups in there. A lot of original plastic as well. Oh. Yeah, like I said, we have a lot to talk about. Look at the top though. Cray cray. Street cray girl. I'm zooming in. How's it looking? Looking 85. P. Pretty sexy. Okay, so let's talk. First off, what's a conversion? What are you even talking about? Conversion is usually when you take an older Les Paul. A lot of times it's, you know, early 50s gold tops. Guys will take, um, those would be P90s. Take the pickups out and a professional will strip the top. A lot of times there are nice maple tops underneath it too. Strip the top, route it out, drop some original PAFs in there, refinish it in sunburst, basically make it into a 59 looking Les Paul that will still be made out of old Gibson wood from the 1950s, but will not be from actually from the year 59. You'll just convert it to have the specs from the year 59. Easy enough, everybody hang? Everybody can hang on that? We're following what a conversion <laughs> is? Okay, so that's a conversion. Let's talk about this guitar. Here's the lore of this guitar as far as I know it so far. Because I know two of the owners, previous owners of this guitar. This guitar was originally purchased at the Arlington Guitar Show in 1995 um, by someone who is fairly well known and renowned for being an expert on original plastic and parts, you know, vintage parts. This guitar came in in like a moldy, molded out brown case that stunk and they opened it up and it was all moldy inside and there was stuff all over the guitar and everything. Right? Can you just imagine the scenario? And like I said, this guy was an expert kind of on plastic and the parts of the era. So he sees this molded out case, he sees molded out guitar and he looks and goes, those are original M69 rings. And, oh man, that poker chip's right, that switch tip's right, and he takes it out and there's double black bob and PAFs in it. He goes, oh my God, I've just found the 59 Les Paul. 
so he buys it. Years later, has it opened up to be authenticated, turns out it's a conversion. His expertise in the parts actually is what, you know, screwed up the whole thing. Because he saw that it was, it has a 59 wiring harness in it, bumblebee caps, double black PAS, M69 rings. All this, all this stuff made sense, but it was a conversion. And that brings us to the controversy. Mark, what the hell is it? Answer? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um, the story we were told was it was a 54 gold top that originally got retopped, refinished, and all the parts added. Is that true? I have no idea. Could be a 55, maybe a 68. I, I don't know what it is. It's priced accordingly because of that, because it's one thing to have a conversion where you have, hey, here's the guitar right here, photograph, and then the guy's got it on the bench, photographing. Here we are stripping the finish, photographing. Here I am routing the thing, photographing. You have the whole process of the guitar, and you know exactly what the guitar is, what it started as, what the shell is, what everything is. We don't know. I don't know who did the conversion. All I know is it fooled an expert back in the 90s. I mean, you can you can see why. When you see the old case and it's all moldy and shit, it's like, oh my God, that was just in a barn. And I opened it up and there's all the stuff. You can see how he got fooled. But let's talk here. You can see the inlays. Fretboard got buffed at some point and has kind of darkened up the inlays a little bit. Frets have been dressed down. Um, in my opinion, I think this guitar, whoever buys it, uh, if you're really going to take this thing out and gig it, as it should be done, it should probably get refretted. It plays. I have no problem playing this. It would just play a lot better with some new frets on it. But yeah, it's a cool guitar. Great weight. Repro case. You can see it's got a 59 serial number stamped on there, which is a little too low. You know, should be a little bit higher. <laughs> Man, don't take it out on me, dude. We're, we're trying to offer cool guitars to people. I mean, if you think about it, if you went out and bought yourself a Collector's Choice Les Paul for $7,500 and then you went and tried to track down a set of PAFs, it might cost you six or $7,000. You already spent more money. And then you still wouldn't have old pots and original Bumblebee caps and who knows what wood, but probably old wood and, you know, plastic that's valuable and you know, you gotta understand that you're not buying a collector's item here you're buying a tool most of us me definitely included in this category are probably never gonna pull the trigger on a real one never really gonna have the opportunity to own a Les Paul guitar with PAFs in it probably not in the cards for me unless something major happens like I'm talking like get hit by a freaking post office truck but don't die, but get like a huge settlement, something happened. That's what it's gonna take probably for me to have one. <laughs> we should get Greg to hit me with the truck. Yes, Our postman we Greg, should. she just hit the shit out of me with the truck. I'm gonna sue, buy a real burst. Me too, hit me on the way too. Till that happens, <laughs> this is probably as close as I would ever get. It's pretty cool. So cool, it was take your amp to work day today, man. I even brought in the Marshall from the house just to pair it up with something. Fender still hasn't given me one of those deluxe reverbs yet, and I'm pissed about it, so I'm gonna play it through the Marshall today. I'm excited. It's controversial, guys. I'm not selling it as anything other than what I told you. It's an old Les Paul guitar with some original parts in it, but it's cool, man, and it sounds great. Let's go plug it in. Let's get the weekend started. Let's go do it. All right, we're out front. We have the Gibson Sunburst Les Paul. Burst conversion, the original. PAF pickups. We're going through uh, Marshall 1974X today, uh, 18 watts. Oh, everything's on about three quarters of the way up. Seven, let's call it. Um, start on that neck PAF pickup all by itself. Let's see what we got.
go to the middle position on the switch. We have both of those PAF pickups working together. See what we got going down there in the middle. freaking open all by itself. Let's see what we got going through the Marshall here. <laughs> from but man it's got some original double black PAFs in it it's got some original plastic on there it's got the weight it's got the sound man it's got the feel it's a really cool guitar but it's a player man you got to know what you're buying when you go into this stuff and you're buying a slight mystery we understand that if you're interested give us a call it's here at the shop on consignment like I said from one of our celebrity clientele here there's another week of guitar of the day in the bag follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Mark Agnesi. Follow the store at, at Norman's Rare Guitars and check this and the rest of these guitars out online while they last at normansrareguitars.com. Don't forget the contest. Send those emails to Jen at Norman's Rare Guitars. We'll be picking the uh, first winner on Tuesday for Telly Tuesday. You guys have a great weekend. We'll see you back here for an all new week of Guitar of the Day. See you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.